Module 2, Making the Connection. Welcome to Module 2, Design. This module focuses around the essential question, if the center of the face-to-face -face class consists of what occurs during class meetings, what is the center of an online or hybrid course? Regis College's course development process. This course is the beginning of your course development process. In addition to experiencing an online course as a learner, our intention is to give you practice in the types of thinking and tasks required to redesign course components. Starting with this module, you will begin to map out your course content and design one potential module. Once you have one complete module, you can use that as a template to redesign the remainder of the course. Along the way, you will work with an instructional designer, most likely me, to redesign assignments and learn the necessary technology skills to design and teach the course. At the end of this online course, and once you have been assigned a course to teach online, you will be partnered with the instructional designer to work with over the ensuing months to complete your course in full about three to four weeks before when the course is set to run. This means early to mid-August for those teaching their course in fall and mid-December for those teaching their course in spring. During that time, you will have several milestones to complete, including one module complete. Developing an entire module in your Moodle course shell will help you create a template for future modules, as well as allow you and the instructional designer to check in to see if there are any concerns. One-third course completion. This entails having one-third of the modules completed in the Moodle course shell. Again, you and your instructional designer will sit down to discuss how the process is going and any concerns that either see with what has been created thus far. Two-thirds course completion. By this point, you will not only have developed two-thirds of the modules, but also completed the supplemental materials such as guidelines, rubrics, the syllabus, etc. This is an important deadline because this is the point the instructional designer will need to report to your supervisor about whether the course is on schedule to run for the semester it is scheduled for. Three-thirds course completion. The course will be entirely complete and ready in the course shell along with all minor detail gradebook connections to assignments, welcome announcement post, etc. Throughout this course, the instructional designer will be checking in with you regularly and is always happy to meet with you to develop or discuss some element of your course. That is, after all, what instructional designers are here for. Instructional Design Redesigning a course for the online or hybrid environment is a challenging process. As an instructional designer, I have had extensive teaching experience at the post-secondary level. I also have expertise in instructional design as it applies to the academic setting. Simply put, instructional design is the how-to of teaching and learning. My experience in education and instructional design lies in knowing the details of how people learn and how to get the most out of teaching particularly when using technological tools and when teaching partially or wholly at a distance. I strive to create and maintain collaborative partnerships focused on both your professional growth and the creation of well-designed courses. I act as a guide and provide recommendations about best practices for the online learning environment, but recognize and respect your choices, knowing that you are a highly competent and skilled instructor. Ultimately, the instructor will create the content, the pathway, and all the resources for the course, but the instructional designer will provide feedback, recommendations, and aid the instructor in the creation of media and technological elements of the course. Elements of Online and Hybrid Course Design in face-to-face -face classes, the course is generally structured around class time. Unit and lesson plans may be used, but the classroom session is the center focal point. It is where the learning supposedly takes place. This changes with online and hybrid courses where the instructor can actually center the focus on the learning and less on the preconceived one-size-fits-all notion of class time. For, exa for example, 50 minutes, 75 minutes, 170 minutes. 
Some instructors will still return to structuring their learning around weeks, which seem to emphasize time over content. However, I recommend using the language of modules, which helps to emphasize content over time. Now, modules may each run one week, but the semantic difference helps to keep the larger substantive difference in online and hybrid learning, which is a focus on chunked learning over time-related learning. The module itself is broken into several components to make for clear and easy movement. Listed below are the major sections of each module, though there are likely to be more included, such as the specific assignments, discussion forum, assignment submissions, links to readings, or folders with readings. Together, these below form what is often called the learning guide for each module. Overview. This section highlights usually three major elements of a given module. Topics, objectives, and activities. The topics illustrate the content to be covered during the module. The objectives cover what learners may successfully achieve during the module. The activities identifies the different tasks a learner must complete for a given module in the preferred order of completing them. This would include working through the learning guide, additional readings, discussions, and other assignments. Making the connection. This can be equated to the instructor's notes or lecture. This material provides a context for what students will be learning and how and why it is relevant. This is a core piece for the instructor as it is his or her voice putting all the pieces of the module into a sensible context. Instructor's remarks can also come in several forms such as a text, podcast, narrated PowerPoint, and even a video. Assignments. These are the activities a student must do to complete this particular module. In this area, the instructor would include readings, discussions, assignments, and their respective due dates to help the student plan his or her work accordingly. Mapping the course. In the design process, a key element is mapping out your course. This entails outlining the essential elements of each module to help provide you with a map of how to prioritize the content development of your course. I provide templates with which you can fill in the various elements for each module such as topics, objectives, activities, assessments, and other items. It is a great way to create a clear and solid picture of your course. In a hybrid course, one of the first things you need to do is identify what activities will take place in the face-to-face -face environment and what activities will take place in the online environment. It is important to make sure that these activities build upon, complement, and support each other instead of almost creating two separate course experiences. Templates for a hybrid course map and an online course map are available in the learning guide in Module 2. You will be filling out these maps in the ensuing weeks as an ongoing project. Best Practices for Online and Hybrid Course Design Another key component of the course is the aesthetic design. Often instructors do not give full consideration to the aesthetics, but it certainly does enhance the learning experience and ease of moving through the course. Just like a book or a building, there is a lot of value in creating an overall consistency for the course so that students can more effectively use it. Here are some considerations for making the course appear consistent and clear. Naming consistency. Be sure to be consistent in naming conventions with content titles. If using modules, do not switch to weeks. For dates, if using 12, 12, 2012, do not switch to December 14th, 2012. And numbering, if using the number one, do not switch to the word two. Fonts, keep a consistent and clear font type and size throughout your material. Just like a book, a consistent and clear font indicates a level of professionalism that you want to convey to your students. Colors. Keep a consistent and normative color scheme for two important reasons. The first is accessibility. For people who have trouble with seeing colors, too much or poor contrast colors, light gray on a white background, will be quite hard to read. The second is that color variation might clash with the student's Moodle or browser color settings and they may be missing something. Folder usage. Use folders to keep material organized, but don't use folders unnecessarily. 
If a folder only has one item in it, consider how you might make that item available without an additional folder. Ordering. Place items within a folder in the order in which you want the students to move through them, since often they will work through the materials from top to bottom. Ultimately, the goal is to make sure there is consistency throughout the course and that it appears clear and easy to move through. Accessibility and Universal Design for Learning As you develop your course, an important frame to work with is that of Universal Design for Learning. Universal Design for Learning is making sure that your course can be easily accessible for people of all abilities. If providing video or audio material, you will want to make sure to provide transcripts. If providing images, you should include basic descriptions of the image. Be prepared with alternatives for assignments that might heavily rely on a specific ability, such as creating a visual presentation, creating a podcast. A strong awareness of universal design for learning will allow for you to create a course that is welcoming and engaging for all your students. Questions. Please feel free to post them in the questions forum or send me an email at lance.eaton at Thank you very much.